All right, welcome to part two of my carbon fiber intake build. This video will go into how to actually produce the mold or, or make the mold that'll produce the carbon fiber pieces that we need to, to make this intake. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take our cardboard template that we made and just break it back apart the way it was when, um, when we first uh, designed, designed the part. So the carbon fiber uh, molds that we make or pieces that we make are going to be a two-piece deal that will actually have a little flange on the side here and that's how we're going to attach the two pieces together. So we're going to cut these open and flatten them back out uh, like we did when we first designed the parts. We kind of want to do this. In a way that's going to be really easy. It's going to. Be the easiest to cut this thing. What I'm going to do now steel. is just trace these onto the steel. And you kind of want to maximize space because. The remaining part of this space we're going to use uh, for something else later on the, in, in the project. Just take this, and it's not really critical that it's exactly a, a precise um, transfer, but you want it as close as you possibly can. I mean, the closer the better. So now that we have this, basically what we're going to do is we'll draw our bend lines where they should go in here and then we'll just take a jigsaw and cut all this out and bend it up just like we had the cardboard done. Alright, so uh, we're going to jump forward a little bit. I've actually completed this. I'm just going to show you what I've done. Um, basically took the cardboard layouts that we had done earlier, uh, transferred them to sheet metal, um, cut them out, took the sheet metal, bended it up just like we did the cardboard, and as you can see, it's basically the same thing that we had earlier. Then I took the, the remaining sheet metal, traced it out, and cut it to where now we have a negative piece. It's got nice, nice cavities in there that um, we'll produce our pieces out of. All right, by the magic of television, I've already uh, actually built the bottom half here. Um, I wanted to do it just to make sure that I didn't have any issues uh, with release or uh, the actual fire, uh, carbon fiber or the resin or anything before I went on to the top half. And um, as you can see, it didn't turn out too bad. So what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to do the, the uh, upper part of the, the box. And I wanted to kind of show you the process that I went through to do it. Um, you can see here, uh, I just got some uh, twill carbon fiber here. This is the, the matting. And I've actually got some other stuff that I found that um, you can actually trim real good and it stays intact. Um, unlike this where you have all your fibers that, that come loose, um, you can actually trim these up and um, they, won't, uh, they won't fall apart, which is excellent because I can pre-trim all the sides and make a real strong uh, deal. Um, on this section here, uh, it's two layers of, of, of regular mat and then I actually stacked in several layers of the other stuff. On this one, I'm basically going to do the same thing. Um, I'll put down the first layer of this. That way I'll have a nice consistent uh, carbon fiber look to it. It'll be, I'm going to try to get it as smooth as possible. Then I'll put in these panels 
uh, and where they, you know, in, their, in the proper places, this can be the, the flange here. Then I'll put in another mat and then I'll stack the rest of these in there uh, with a layer of resin in between each one. I'm working this part of the mold now. Um, I've already put down, I've already waxed it. Obviously I've contoured all the edges. I've already waxed it and it's got PVA on it, which is that, that um, uh, thin layer of film that basically dries on there uh, to help to help it release some. Um, out here is like a double sided contact. I don't want to say it's like a tape, but it's 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 more like a putty, a sticky putty. Um, this is what the vacuum bag itself will attach to. Um, and I've actually went ahead and pre put little fingers in there to give the bag this will actually stick up and I'll wrap the bag on both sides of this um, and that'll give the bag enough uh, material where it can actually sink into here and I won't have to stretch um, so basically what I'll do is I'll put in some resin um, in here lay the mat uh, stack some more resin lay the mat and just keep putting layers and layers and layers in here um, like I said it didn't kick real fast last time uh, the resin's supposed to kick in about an hour, um, which is a pl you know plenty of time. You sh should never have to rush. Uh, it this actually took longer last time, so I'm I really have no sense of urgency. And then once all the fibers laid, I know that I got enough resin in there. First thing that's going to go down is the peel ply. This here has actually got little tiny holes in it that actually lets the resin seep through. Um, so this will be the first layer that goes over the, the carbon. Uh, the next layer is your breather cloth. Uh, this does two things. It actually allows air to travel through it. As you vacuum bag, it'll suck the air out. And it also absorbs any extra resin. Um, the last one I did, I had two, you know, more resin I probably needed. I just wanted to make sure that it was a nice thorough coat. Uh, so when I actually pulled this out, it, it had a ton of resin in it. Um, and then the last one is the the bagging material itself. This is a flexible material. Uh, it'll flex within reason, but you still don't want to expect it to do a lot of stretching because uh, you, you'll get those pockets of resin in the, in the corners, especially in something like this where it'll be down in these corners here. I'm going to try, I'm going to be brave. I'm actually going to try to put my logo in there in the top. Um, can't tell it from here, but that's uh, cut out of carbon fiber. Yeah, so. Hopefully it'll be straight. If not, I'll be stuck with it. Um, well, let's do this. Basically everything's hardened, uh, vacuum bagging, um, it sucked everything in and, and the resin's kicked and it's, it's hard. And what I actually did too was I, uh, I put a little heat on the back side of the mold since this is a steel mold and kind of heated the whole part and that, that allowed it to kick a little faster. And if it's like the last one, it wasn't too bad to peel out. Basically, you just get this, this goo, gooey stuff, and for the most part, it just peels right up.
Now this peel ply, so you can see, there's the bag material. There's the, the breather cloth there. And then this is the peel ply. And you see how easy that just comes up even on the the parts that's had resin on it. I mean it just peels right up. So really you should be able to just pull this stuff right out inside this mold. Just like that. Alright, you can see this peel ply just peels right off. See, and then there's your actual breather cloth. It's actually sucked up a lot of that re extra resin. You can see that there's a lot of extra resin. And, I mean, it basically took the shape of the part to you. I mean, you just got a nice, tight part in there. All right, there you go. Popped out pretty easy. Um, you see it's got a nice flange on it around the edge. Um, you know, and we'll trim it back probably to something like that. Depending on what we do, we may bolt it all the way around, make a two-piece mold, or um, if we end up bonding it with like a two-part uh, deal, then, uh, I'll, you know, I won't need much at all. Just I'll cut it back as far as I can. Um, it's got a little. It's gonna need a little cleanup. It's got a lot of resin right here. And, uh, the fiber is actually down a little bit. No big deal. We'll contour that curve. Uh, water sand it. Man, this thing's solid as a rock. Um, if you can see it, but I put put me a little custom customness in there. So nobody nobody can ever claim uh, claim it built right in there so popped right out wasn't, wasn't too bad wasn't as bad as I thought it would be um, it'll be super bitching once we um, put a nice sanding on it and um, um, clear it we'll probably clear it with like some kind of uh, car clear we can do a, like a uh, clear coat and then actually cut and buff it and it'll just be uh, it'll just be spectacular looking, in the, you know, when it, when it pops and strong as, strong as all get out. So, all right, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll get this, get this bad boy together.